All right, welcome to our DIY Niwa environmental control hack. Now, in this video, I'm going to discuss a few things about this hack. Then I'm going to introduce you to and explain the heart of this hack. And then I'm going to display and explain a wiring diagram I put together for this hack. And finally, I'm going to show you a video clip on how I assembled it all. Now, a couple of things we want to get out of the way first. Number one, the all-important disclaimer, okay? If you don't feel comfortable or have the proper knowledge for working with home wiring or don't understand anything I discuss in this video, don't try this. You could cause harm to yourself or start a fire and burn your house down or both. We don't want to see that happen to you or anybody else. So have someone with the proper knowledge of home electrical wiring do this for you. A friend, even better yet, a licensed electrician. You can show them this video uh, so they have an understanding of what uh, we're trying to accomplish. Okay. Number two, what is a, a NIWA? Well, basically a NIWA is a, a power hub which contains four receptacles, each which acts as a power switch to turn on or off various devices that are plugged into each power receptacle based on the parameters set up in the NIWA phone app. So basically, here's our four re power receptacles right here. This is our sensor. USB plugs right into there. And based on the environmental conditions that we set up, it's going to turn on or off uh, these uh, receptacles, depending on how we have them assigned, whether I've got number one assigned for air conditioning, number two assigned for my heater, number three assigned for my dehumidifier, and number four assigned to my humidifier. So why do we need this hack? Well, for safety reasons, the Niwa Grow Hub has a maximum current limit of 10 amps for each receptacle plug with a total maximum limit of 15 amps for the entire hub. That's no different than a standard power strip. In other words, you can't plug your air conditioner in here, then plug your heater in here, then plug your dehumidifier in here and expect it to stay in one piece. It's way over current for this, all right, and for this or any other receptacle receptacle for that matter any other power strip we need to have a workaround for that now normal house wiring contains you in the US contains 15 amp circuit breakers with a receptacle outlet rating at 15 amps max and a recommended continuous amperage rating of 80% of its maximum in other words it's rated at 15 amps but if you're going to run something continuously like a heater or an air conditioner you want to stay around 80% or somewhere around 12, 12 and a half amps max to be safe. All right, let me give you a couple of examples. A standard 120 volt portable space heater draws 1500 watts and that's at 12.5 amps. I myself have a 3000 watt 240 volt cadet wall heater which draws between 14 or 12 and a half to 14 and a half amps. Now that 240 volt circuit is on a 20 amp circuit. It's not a 15 amp circuit. We'll get into that a little bit later. My dual holes portable uh, 12,000 BTU portable air conditioner draws 11.8 amps. My 50 pint a day dehumidifier draws around four and a half to five amps. So you can see there's a lot of amperage and we can't put it all on the hub or we'll, or we'll burn it up. It's just not meant to handle that much current. Now. Uh, concerning air conditioners and dehumidifiers, they both have compressors in them, which causes a power surge when they first kick on. That power surge can have negative effects on other equipment on the same circuit. You don't want to ruin your uh, expensive grow light, your TV, your computer, or anything else with sensitive electronic circuits. That's why you should uh, always have each of them on their own separate electrical circuits. That means a cir separate circuit breaker in your breaker box dedicated just for that appliance. On the uh, dehumidifier, since it's only four or, four or five uh, amps, you could get away as long as you don't have a sensitive equipment. Like if you've got li a light bulb or something like that, that's one thing. But you don't want to put anything sensitive on there and burn it up. Uh, Let me show you what the heart of this whole system is, okay? And this is it right here, a solid state relay. And the way this thing works is we take our uh, one leg of our power or our hot wire and we're going to have it come right in here. Our AC 120 volts hot wire will go right there. When this switch closes, it's going to supply power to this uh, terminal right here, which is our AC power out. And then we'll take it from there, set it up to uh, go into a 
normal receptacle, power receptacle, and we'll plug our appliance into that power receptacle. I'll show you how all that is uh, worked out a little bit later. But how this works is we've got our, our, our hot wire uh, going in here. The circuit is normally open. Now down here we have two terminals, a positive and a negative. This is DC current here. This is AC up here. Now this DC comes in from a um, power, a low voltage power supply. It's, you know, it's like something you'd use to charge your phone or something like that. The one I purchased is used for a CC uh, TV uh, system. I believe it's nine volts. It's rated at two amps or 200 milliamps. Uh, we're not going to use anywhere near that. Probably about a half amp at the most. And what happens is you plug that into the Niwa receptacle. And then when the conditions are right are met within the uh, phone app, it turns that receptacle on, which applies power to this low voltage power supply, which in turn supplies low voltage down here. And when this low voltage is, is applied down here, this terminal up here closes, which means power then flows from this terminal here out to this terminal here and then on out from there. Pretty simple. But this is the heart of the whole thing. This particular one is rated at 25 amps. You can get them for 40 and 60 amps. So let's move on to the wiring diagram. Now. All right, guys. This is a little um, wiring diagram I, I drew up. Go easy on me. I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm just trying to give you a graphical representation of what it is we're doing. Now, there's two sides of this, an input side over here and an output side over here. Let's start with the input side. Now, as you can see, we got a little plug here that supplies our 120 volts AC power in from our wall receptacle. All right, so we're taking power from there. Now, there's two sides to this. There's a, a black wire in the wall. Okay, uh, it won't, you won't see it on the extension cord we're using here, but we'll identify it. And that's our hot wire. Now that comes up and hooks up to the hot side of the switch. And then uh, from there on the other side is our neutral, which is our white wire in the wall. And again, you won't see it, but we'll identify it on the plug. And it goes directly over to a standard power receptacle that we're going to use uh, to plug our appliance into. And I'll show you this in, in the next video. All right. But uh, just neutral, it just goes straight on over the power receptacle. The hot wire goes up to the uh, relay, the uh, solid state relay. Now, down here, we've got input from the low voltage DC power supply, which is plugged into the NIWA. So when the NIWA says, oh, you met the uh, conditions that you set, let's turn it on. It turns on, applies power here to this uh, relay, which in turn closes this switch and then suppliers, supplies power back out. Okay, and I've got it labeled here as a hot wire black, and then it goes down to your receptacle, and it's the small side of your receptacle. If you look at your power receptacle on the wall, or you have a large slot, a small slot. Okay, the large slot is the neutral, the, the small slot is your hot side, and the, the little slot down below, which is what this is here, that's your ground. So, it's a pretty simple circuit. Uh, to understand, hopefully you understand. Now, this is something you'd use for, for an air conditioner, dehumidifier, or a small portable heater. We're using standard wall outlets as a, a way of plugging our appliance into that. Now, I told you I had my particular heater. It's a uh, 3,000 watt, 240 volt heater. I've got a little circuit down here I drew up for it. Let's uh, see if we can get it all in the... In the there we go get it on the screen for you okay again input output side power from the you know very similar okay but instead of a uh, 120 volts we've got 240 volts one of them is uh, labeled line one it's the hot wire and it's gonna well both wires are hot because it's 240 but this is our line one coming in okay supplying power here when we get voltage from the Niwa or from the low voltage power supply it closes the switch and it comes back out and goes to our heater Okay, or power out to our 240-volt AC heater. Now, um, the heater that I have, it's a 240-volt cadet wall heater. It's 3,000 watts, all right? Now, uh, these heaters, when you buy them from a big box store, they come with an internal um, uh, thermostat. It's just a cheap little thermostat, okay? And the, you can take, you can bypass it and take it out, or you can special order one without a thermostat but in this case what I do is I just close it all the way in other words turn the heat up all the way on that thermostat that closes this circuit here now I've also got 
a, a uh, wall, a single pole wall thermostat. Okay, and that's where my other hot wire comes in, my line one hot wire. It's going to go into that. Okay, and then it's going to go through that. We're going to turn this wall thermostat up all the way so it's closed all the time, unless you hit like 100 degrees or something, but um, for the most part, it's closed all the time. Uh, for our uses anyways it's going to supply power here this one's closed supplies power here and that's where this power comes from okay. your other line two which is a hot wire so you don't want to be touching on it okay. but uh it's uh labeled uh or load two l2 line two that's coming in here it's kind of like the neutral wire on our 120 volt only it is this one's hot and it's a, it's over it connects directly to the to the heater and that's the way it would normally be hooked up this wire would would bypass any switches unless you have here a double pole thermostat now if you have a double pole thermostat you're still going to close it all the way it happens is the power is going to go through here through the internal which turns it into a single pole again and then uh, on up and out so uh, we only need to worry about the line one side of that circuit basically that's it so now that we understand that let me show you how I put all this stuff together, okay? So stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how I solid install and then and, and wire up this solid state relay here. Now it comes, the kit that I bought comes with these um, heat sinks, which I've already mounted in our box. Comes with the relay, of course, two packets of uh, thermal paste, uh, and then two screws to mount this onto our heat sink. Now. Um, this thermal paste, we're going to, I've got a, hang on, I'm going to go here. I've got a, a paper towel dampened with some isopropyl alcohol. And we want to clean our surface. We're going to start with the top one. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to wipe the bottom real good. So we're nice and clean and we get a good, good contact. We'll let that sit there for right now while it, and let them both dry for a minute. What I want to show you is... I'm using these pigtails, okay, that I purchased, okay, and that's what, let me pan out now, that's what these are right here on the side, I've got three pig, pigtails, which I labeled with colored electrical, the blue is my air conditioner, the red is my heater, and the gray is my dehumidifier. Okay, and I marked them on the inside too here so I know what they are. This is my power supply, my low voltage power supply. You want one that the plugs are facing down this way. So when you plug it in to your Niwa, it's actually plugging in this way. So make sure you get one that's got the plugs going like this in the down position. So when you plug it in, it's this way. Now, enough of that. I think we're pretty much dry let me see if I can get one of these I got it it's got a tear open on it okay now this is thermal paste that you would use on a central processing unit or anything like that on your computer and you're just gonna squeeze it on there now you can see what I'm doing okay so I've got that packet out now let's move on to the other and the reason I'm wearing gloves is so I don't contaminate the surface with any oils from my fingers. And uh, let's put another one on this side and then spread it out evenly. I'll try to spread it out as evenly as possible. Okay, I think that's about it. So let's now I'm gonna I don't have a, a regular spreader, so I'm gonna take my finger. Let's see if I can spread this out. So we get a nice even coat there. Okay, and this will allow the transfer of heat between the relay and the heat sink to uh, be efficient. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit up here since it does. It looks like they give us give us just enough. Okay, so we've got both sides clean. We've got our, our paste 
put on there. So now I'm going to position these. This is our low voltage side, okay? Our DC side. Oops, here we go. This is our low voltage side down here. So I'm going to position that this way. All right. So I know you guys probably can't see it, but I'm lining up the holes. And it came with these screws so that we can screw this straight down into the hate zinc. Hopefully, I don't lose it when I'm moving on it. Okay, I'm gonna give it a few moves and then I'm gonna start my screw in there. And at first, I'm just gonna snug the first screw. I'm come over on the other side and let me get on the other side of the camera so I can do this. All right, guys, I got it started, I think. We'll screw it down, snug it. Okay, I'm going to tighten this one up. And then I'm going to come back to the one on the other side. We're going to snug it down too okay not so much that we strip anything out but we do want it snug and so that's how you install the uh there it is installed now what i'm going to do is i'm going to strip these wires the red wire is going to attach to our positive which is here and the black wire is going to attach to our negative here so other than that pretty simple all right so all stay right, tuned i went ahead and stripped these uh these, these uh, pigtails here, turns out they're about 16 gauge wire. I had to go get these little terminals for them, uh, made for 16 gauge wire. I've got it plugged in and I'm checking the polarity. As you can see, we've got nine positive 9.16 volts coming out. Okay, and you can see my red to red and black to black. If they were, if the polarity wasn't right, it would show a negative, but we're showing a positive. So we're good to go. All so, right. As you can see, we've got all our low voltage uh, part of the circuit set up and all our uh, relays uh, installed. I've also installed the output side or the 120 volt side and down and right here would be our 240 heater and these two and these two are our 120. Uh, let me go over how I got those connected, particularly the 120s. Now, over here, I've got one installed. Let me spin this around so you can see it. Okay, we've got, I'll move my whole camera set up here. We've got one installed. Now, let's go down, the one that I haven't finished installing, let's go down and take a look at that. Zoom in there. Now, what we've got, if you remember, we've got a, a black side, or black wire, which is our hot wire, 120 wire, that hooks up to the gold colored screws on your receptacle here on the other side we've got our neutral wire which i labeled with white tape here because this is coming in directly from our power our power cords down here that we're going to plug into the wall into our wall receptacle and then we've got our and i've got my ground down here these are uh, silver screws so the white always goes to silver screws now the other side and i'm talking about our air conditioning extension cord when I split it the the um, neutral side goes to the silver on our receptacle the black side which in this case it's just gray wire of course um, this goes in here on our receptacle and I've got it labeled and I made these uh, uh, annotations and updated the uh, the uh, schematic. That's this side here, and that's the blue-gray tape. So blue-gray, and that's just for our references. It's not not doing anything electrical, uh, code or anything. Uh, blue-gray is our incoming hot wire from blue-gray is our incoming hot wire from the right side of our uh, extension cord okay remember when I told you and I'll use a here's a, a standard plug receptacle 
the large side is, is neutral. The, sm the smaller side is our hot side, and then this down here is our ground. When you look at it this way, and it plugs in, the left side is neutral, the right side is our hot wire. Okay, so we're taking the right side and connecting it to uh, one side of our switch here, directly to here. Our neutral is bypassing goes directly to our, uh, our re receptacle output. All right, now I want to point out on these uh, these cords, here's the end that I had to cut off, okay? Now I don't know if you can see it, but if you notice this side right here, that's our larger and that's our neutral. How can we tell? Well, let's spin it over. And on the neutral side, in a lot of instances, and I don't know if the camera's going to focus on this or not, but there's a ridge right here, and you can feel it, and you can see it if you really look close. Maybe not in this video, but okay. And that identifies it as neutral. Now, you can always take your uh, multimeter and, and uh, between here and your what you believe is a neutral side and check for uh, continuity. And that'll double check it for you. Both the same thing for the hot side. Check for continuity with your multimeter. All right. One other tip I wanted to explain to you. When you're stripping that wire, this is, okay, be careful when you're stripping it not to strip off any of these thin uh, uh, stranded wires because we've got quite a bit of amperage going through here. We want the best connection possible so we don't have any issues with anything heating up because wherever there's not a good connection, that's where you're liable to have uh, heat problems and possibly fire problems, okay? So, same holds true when you buy these uh, things. You want to, these uh, uh, air conditioner extension cords, you want to get a good quality uh, extension cord, okay? So we have good contacts here and a good quality um, receptacle that we're going to be plugging into. Now, I... This is a standard house receptacle, and it's it's the cheaper one, okay? This on here, these gray ones that I got, these are more commercial grade. I'll show you up here. That's a more commercial grade. And, and uh, one of the advantages is you can, instead of, if you look at these, on the back of these, you can slide your 14 gauge, uh, 15 amp wire right in here. Well, that's a lazy man's way, all right? And in my opinion, doesn't give you a good connection. The other way is to wrap your wire around here. All right. Well, that gets to be a pain in the butt because, especially if you're working with stranded wire, it wants to spread out and everything. This one, on this one, it actually has where you can slide your stranded wire underneath this little clip here, and you get a good solid connection. All right. So, little tip there. Uh, another thing. I'll go over is the construction of this box but before I do let me back out a little bit and get it in focus here for you on this side this is my remember I said I had a 120 volt cadet heater well that's what this is okay and down here on the schematic I noted uh, to make it a little bit clearer you can't really see it now because this thing's not focusing but um, down here I, I labeled them with the colors Okay, so basically our input right here is a, our blue is our blue gray tape. This is our input. Okay, our output going back here, that'd be this side of the circuit here. That's our yellow tape. All right, and I, I, I made additional annotations down here so it's a little more clear. So basically we're going to be splicing in between right here the output side of the heater with the blue gray tape that'll that's this okay the output from our relay that's this and this is going to go back into the heater right here all right pretty simple uh, one other thing i want to cover is this construction of this box now i had to make sure um, and i did quite a bit of searching so this box is four inches deep and ten inches high uh, these um, SSRs, when they're mounted on the uh, heat sink, I required a minimum of four inches so I could get my lid on the on the box. 
something back out of it so we can get a lid on the box and uh, everything fit. Okay, I needed 10 inches this way so that these two boxes would fit. Now those boxes, uh, they come, I don't have a square one so I'm going to show you with this, they come with these little tabs. Okay, well I had to bust them off because otherwise they're going to be sticking in the way out the back and on the sides. So you just take a pair of pliers and bend it back and it'll pop right off. Real simple. All right. Now the rest of this construction, uh, I screwed holes through here, mounted them with a 10 16th inch screw, and this nut on the end is, I, you can't really see it, but it's got the nylon washer on the inside, so it's a locking nut. Okay, so they're not coming off. And an eighth inch uh, drill bit hole works perfect for that. They slide right in. All right. And uh, the same thing when I mounted the heat sinks on to this board. I used the same screws and the same locking nuts, okay, with another eighth inch hole drilled. On the sides, and I'll pan in here so you can see this, right here, oh, hopefully you can see it, right here on both of these where my wires are coming through the box, through the box in here, and then down here from this side, and down, see where my wires are coming through. I've got a, a, a 3 h in grommet, and um, I drilled, let's see, what did I drill? I drilled a 9 16 hole for that, and that made it real easy to slide in. However, it does make it real easy when you're pulling your wires through to pop back out. So if you think you can get a, a you can drill a half inch hole and it might be a little a little more snug but they're there to protect the wires if you notice I put some uh, on the inside here on all of these okay I put some um, uh, zip ties to eliminate any pulling on those wires uh, from anywhere else okay like right here you can't pull these out any further than that okay so that's just a little tip there and uh, otherwise this box is pretty much finished. I'm going to go ahead and install, finish installing this and my cover plates for this. You can see this side here is just a, the wires just come in and come feed back up through this conduit here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, the installation and then we'll come back and we'll wrap this video up. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we got it all put together. I've got my covers on you can see this is just a solid plate for my 240 volt side and then I've got my wall receptacles here now one thing I'd like to point out when I was wiring this up into these receptacles and for the um, for these wires here um, this this is 12 gauge stranded wire uh, the reason I use 12 gauge is twofold number one that's what I had here and, but number two, I find the stranded wire is easier to work with when you get into tight spaces like uh, these boxes here. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know all the tricks, but uh, I find it easier to work with. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to point out that uh, I'm not sure how much heat this these relays are going to uh, produce basically out through the heat sinks. So I'm going to be monitoring that. And if I uh, detect that we've got uh, sufficient heat buildup and it's not uh, transferring out of the box itself, I'll drill some small holes up on top uh, to let that heat out. Okay, but that's something I'm going to monitor. I haven't done that yet. One last thing I'd like to point out is say the same principles with this box. Now this is an envi for environmental uh, control. But the same principles can be used for controlling. Let's say you have a, a flower room and you got four lights. They're all on the same um, um, light cycle, okay? And so you're going to turn them on and turn them off, and you want to use the knee to do it. You can wire something up just like this, very similar to this, okay? Where your your lights would plug in to these receptacles on the side, and each one, each one of these relays, these are 25 amp relays. Technically, you could put three of them on there. That would be 18 amps, but uh, it would be easier if we put two, which would be 12 amps, okay? Two, that's 12 amps. That gets us 
within range here so we're not uh, running up 18 amps through our receptacles out here. So we'll go uh, two lights and two lights and then you can plug each two lights into this one, two lights. There's four lights. If you wanted to plug uh, another uh, light instead of running, I've got it running a heater here, we just use the same circuits like these over on this side. So technically this box can be used for up to six lights, assuming they're about six amps draw each, okay? If they're more than that, you'll have to do the math. I'll have to, you'll also have to upgrade the input, okay? This here we're using 120 volt, 120 volts that we're plugging into the wall. I would recommend hardwiring it with conduit directly in here and then uh, uh, dividing that power up on the, on the hot side of each one of these switches. And then when it does switch, it'll switch to each of these receptacles okay just a note you'll, you'll you'll need to do your homework on it but it can be used now you can buy something that does that or like i said you can uh, uh, build another little box like this just for your lights switching on up to well in this case six lights okay if we wanted to go more we need a taller box put another relay in put another box right here we can, so we can do eight lights all right so anyways i hope you got something from this video um i know it was rather long so but i appreciate it and i just trying to get the information out to you uh hopefully you learned something or took something away that you found useful so that's the end of this video as usual stay tuned and we'll keep you posted <laughs>